Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and tomorrow Auburn is playing Florida. When I was when I was in school, Auburn played Florida. I think a couple of times in the four year four years I was in school, and back then Florida had Steve Spurrier as the coach, and it was always that was always a huge tough game. I don't know how how tough Florida is. Um, they haven't been that tough in recent years. I don't know about this year. We will find out tomorrow. Georgia also plays Tennessee. And as I've said before, Georgia has one of the easiest schedules in college football. And Tennessee, as usual, is terrible. Tennessee is, um, is one school that I would love to see start to get really good again. They used to be a, back in the Peyton Manning days, they were a really good football team. And ever since then, they've been struggling. And but that those are some serious football people in the state of Tennessee. And so I know that they are just sick to their stomach and ready to ready to have a good team again. All right, here we go. Leonidas um, sent uh, this out. Leonidas, for those of you that don't know, he has the website XRP Arcade, which is a really good resource for you, um, whether you're new or old to the XRP community. You need to check it out. He says, there's been a frenzy of tweets around Ubri Connect 2019. This is the um, <clears throat> university blockchain research initiative that Ripple is a part of. He says, you can view a large portion of these tweets at XRP Arcade's Ripple feed. And he's got a link. And I wanted to show you, this is his website, XRP Arcade. If you look at the top up here, he's got all sorts of information. But over here... If you click on Ripple feed, that is what you're looking at. And all it is is anytime Ripple or anyone having to do with Ripple or XRP sends out a tweet, it shows up in his feed right here. And so it's a really, that remember we covered this yesterday. This was David Schwartz uh, showing us a picture of his grilled chicken that he had created or and he had used spat, he had spatchcocked the chicken. I've never heard that term before. Um, but anyway, so this is a great resource. And it's again, it's xrparcade.com. Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29 sent me this. Um, so from Mac Attack XRP, and he's talking about Anthony Pompliano. For those of you that don't know, Anthony Pompliano is interviewing Brad Garlinghouse this afternoon on his podcast. Well, this guy doesn't understand why Anthony Pompliano can't just upload the podcast and instead is going to make everyone wait until Monday or so to be able to listen to it. He says, why do you wait until Monday to broadcast the interview? Do you need to buy XRP all weekend long? Well, that might be, I think that Anthony Pompliano has large closet bags of XRP um, and so, but yeah, he may be adding to his bags. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then this tweet came from Ripple, um, quote from David Schwartz, to change the way payments work, we need something that is truly open source like the internet. XRP, Ledger's, XRP Ledger offers that opportunity. Ripple T CTO Joel Katz kicks off, um, he kicked off the UbriCon, I guess is how you'd say that. Um, so there's been so many great tweets coming out of Ripple this week on that. Now, this is just hilarious. I told you uh, that yesterday, Hoon Vase, who, who's a Bitcoin maxi, he came out and started trying to bash XRP. I think the great news for Ripple and XRP has been way too much for him to bear. But this is just flat hilarious right here. Lord, Lord Lionel sends this out. He says, well, XRP is winning by 79%. Yes, people understand. And yes, it's money that'll make you rich. I don't think Tone, I think he meant Tone Def Vase really thought through his poll very well. And, um, and so he says, do you understand the reason for XRP's existence? Yes, serious questions. Well, 
what he was hoping would win his poll is actually losing, which is just flat hilarious and really tell more than anything, it illustrates to you the how guys like this, these guys, they they chose the wrong side and now they're being backed into a corner and they are about to look like a horse's you know what. And and this poor guy, sooner rather than later, he should he should go ahead and just say, Look, I was wrong about it. It's nice and easy. It's like pulling off it's like pulling off a band aid. You do it really fast and get it over with, and then all of a sudden you 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 get your credibility back. It's not that difficult to do, man. Go for it. I highly encourage. In fact, if Tone Vase wants to pull that band aid out, band aid off, and and um and tell the world, okay, I was wrong about XRP. I will. I don't even do interviews on this channel, but I will let him call in via cell phone because my technology me is so bad on here. I will let him call in just to say that he was wrong about XRP. And I will be the first to say, welcome aboard, buddy. <laughs> so, but don't hold your breath. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to go over this because I haven't gone over it in a, in a while. And this is an important thing. Exit strategies, folks. We talk all the time. Not all the time, but every once in a while. I will bring, I will kind of do a um, an update on, on what the way you should be thinking about ex the exit strategies. And I was talking to someone about this the other day. And so I thought I would bring it back up. I want many of you, and, and I've got a lot of new people listening. So listen up really well here. If I was going to exit today, okay, as a retail investor, if I was going to exit today, my XRP would come off of my Ledger Nano S and it would go to Coinbase Pro because Coinbase Pro has a lot of volume. It's in the United States. It's, um, it's a place where I think that I could sell a large holding of XRP at a pretty cheap rate. And then from Coinbase Pro, I have set up Coinbase Pro so that I have withdrawal limits that are large enough. And if you haven't got your withdrawal limits set up, you need to. Now, but what I want to talk to you, that's what I would do as a retail investor. Now, as, an, as a retail investor, a lot of you may not know this, but you do have an opportunity if your, your holdings are large enough. Do not waste your time or these companies' time unless you fulfill basically what I'm going to tell you. But um, you do have an option to sign up for one of these over-the-counter um, companies. to and, and the way those work, and I, I have actually talked to one of the head guys at one of these over-the-counter platforms, and I won't tell you the name of it, but I have had a phone conversation so that it, so that, because I've never traded over the counter myself. I've always been a retail guy. Well, I have talked to these people about how it works. But first, you must understand do not even apply if you do not have at least $100,000. And you've got to go read the website of, of whichever over the counter place you're looking at. But you need to have at least $100,000 worth of digital assets or fiat in order for them to entertain your application. How does over-the-counter work in, in the trading? Well, let's compare it to retail. If I wanted to sell um, XRP, let's say I wanted to sell 20,000 XRP through Coinbase, I would send them to Coinbase from my Ledger Nano S, and then I would sell that XRP, in, probably in my case, into U.S. dollars, and then initiate the transfer uh, into my bank account. If you do the same thing over the counter, it works differently. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that all of them work the same way. The guy I talked to, the way he said it works is very simple. It's it's like a it's like a an internet. Uh, it's almost like a direct message system, and you log into the OTC platform and you send a message. The one that I talked to, they have a list of different people. They they assign you an over-the-counter representative. You would direct message that representative and you would say basically you would put in an order with them and say basically I, I want to sell twenty thousand XRP and I want to sell them at five dollars, let's say. Okay. And then that guy is going to turn around and he's going to go and match that order. He's going to find a buyer. It's either going to be an individual or an institutional investor. So you don't have to want 
go on to Coinbase and wonder if several different people are going to take your order or, or take it at different prices and all of that. What this does is it allows you to put one huge order that where there's going to be a lot more liquidity and, and wealthier, wealthier people to gobble up your order and do it in one swoop like that. Then what's going to happen is after your, these, most of these OTC, um, platforms that you're not going to, you're not going, they don't hold your XRP on there. What you, what's going to happen then is they're going to tell you where to send the XRP. You're going to send it and then they're going to dump the proceeds into your bank account. And all of these, you have to do the KYC and all of that. I just wanted to go through with you a few, a few companies that I know do it. Kraken, who we all know as a retail, um, as a retail digital asset platform, they also have an OTC desk. You can go to their website, look around, go Google Kraken OTC and you'll find it. Then you can go and apply. Circle. Circle is owned partially by Goldman Sachs. Circle owns Poloniex, which is a retail platform, but Circle has an over the counter. You can see here individuals, institutions. I have a hundred that you have to tell they're, they're wanting you to start your application here, but you have to acknowledge you have a hundred thousand dollars or more. And I'm looking to trade on my own behalf. Okay. So you see, you have to have a large, you have to have larger sums of money. Binance has an over the counter trading system as well. Same thing in all of these cases. You're going to have to have larger sums of money to be approved. Um, Bitrix, same thing. Bitrix has an over the counter platform. Just about all of these outfits have over the counter platforms. And remember, when you trade over the counter, it's never seen in the retail market. You're not going to see the, those sales reflected. So you're ultimately, um, when you sell a large sum of XRP, you're doing all this XRP holders a favor by doing it over the counter. <laughs> so um, anyway, I just wanted to go over that to make you all aware. Some people aren't, were not aware that you can, you can trade that way. Um, Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. Sent me a few great things. Rhythm Trader, Hong Kong just invoked emergency powers, aka martial law, for the first time in 50 years to stop protesters. It gives the government power to seize property, arrest citizens, and completely shut down internet access at will. This will this is why unseizable money is important. Exactly. All right, Bloomberg tweet here. $63 billion of zombie buildings sound warning for Indian banks. Yes, banks. Yes, bank faces the biggest surge in bad loans as indebted Indian shadow lenders and companies tumble. What does that remind you of, folks? Reminds me of L financial crisis. Rhythm Trader again. A third of millennials already prefer Bitcoin over stocks. Why? They were born into a world of historically massive wealth inequality, corruption in politics, and bill a bill of $246 trillion in global debt that the last generation donned and dashed on. I love that line. $246 trillion in global debt has been locked on all of us. And the last generation did a don and dash on that and just basically said, sorry, we had our time. We had our 30 year um, run up of, of a great life and economy. And so here you go. Here's your debt. $246 trillion. Now, maybe some of those same people were the ones that, that uh, created digital assets or um, initiated the idea of digital assets to put onto the world and it completely flipped the financial world on its end to take care of the problem. Maybe to their credit, they were the ones that got this whole ball rolling. I hope, I hope that that is what their legacy is instead of this. Bitcoin is a means of protest. You got that right. XRP Trooper, at Trooper XRP. Um, great. I love this. RippleNet from Ian Northing, who's been on fire. RippleNet. Building a global payments network for financial institutions powered by XRP. XRP is now the center of Ripple strategy. Seems like the page was turned. And this, this, if you ever want to take something and show 
the tone vase of the world and put it right in front of them and say, now do you get it? Look at this. RippleNet, okay? Ripple, the company. Ripple is one use case, folks. Rip, this is the largest use case. Building a global payments network for financial institutions powered by XRP. These guys are working with banks, central banks, payment companies, financial institutions around the world to work on this massive use case. And then in their genius, they create Spring, which is building a global payments network for developers powered by XRP to create thousands of other use cases. That is what we've been watching Ripple put out this week is thousands of other use cases, We're in, including, and then on top of that, including this blockchain initiative in universities. They had all, some of the smartest people from universities in Tokyo. We saw a picture of that this week. What, the, the ecosystem that is, has been, has the foundations of the ecosystem that have been laid by Ripple with all of the things they've done. It's the most genius thing I've ever seen in my entire lifetime in any company that I've ever followed in my entire lifetime. And to boot, the fact that, that there is an investment opportunity associated with it before the company is even public that you and I can invest with, that's why I call it the greatest asset ever created. It's the greatest digital asset ever created. It's the greatest investment opportunity of three lifetimes because this is a new asset class and it's the best of the new asset class and has the smartest people working on the number on the core use case and then has created a, an incubator for thousands of future and current use cases. It's unbelievable. I've never, this isn't seen isn't seen every lifetime. It takes two and three lifetimes to see an opportunity like this. Okay, XRP General sent this John McAfee. <laughs> I love Fridays when I can show you John McAfee, uh, McAfee's Mixology 101 where he shows you how he's mixing his current liquor drink. A single malt scotch shooter. Just had to show you this today. All right, and finally, um, I, I mentioned to you the other day that the guys from um, from WCC, which is World CryptoCon, which is going to be in Las Vegas at the end of this month, um, these guys sent me an offer so that the people that are listening to my show can get $100 off tickets to the World CryptoCon if that's something you're interested in going to. This, from what I from what I've looked at, this is probably the biggest. Uh, blockchain conference after consensus in New York, but it's in Las Vegas. So how can you have much, how can you have more fun than that? But I wanted to show you a little more about this World CryptoCon, and, and it's going to be in the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. World CryptoCon is um, is the core uh, blockchain event there, but this is an actual blockchain week. And here's some of the people. Pompliano is going to be there, and there's a lot of different people that you'll recognize. This guy's with Brave. There's Brock Pierce from the EOS Alliance. Um, this guy's, I don't know who that is, but you, there's all kinds of people. There's a girl from Forbes, different, all kinds of people from different companies, but there's a lot of huge people. Rand Nooner from CNBC, Africa Crypto Trader. Let me sit here for a second and see who else is, um, is coming to this event. Edge, I think the Edge Wallet is one of the things. Um, if you look here, Microsoft is, is going to have representatives there. Don't know what uh, Green Spoon is. This guy's John Nigerian from CNBC. This person is from Con Consensus. Um, and then Charlie Lee that created Litecoin. Adam Healy from Bact. So you can kind of see. And then as you go down this, the WCC is the core conference here. And then if you keep going, they've got all sorts of different events. WCC Mine. Um, they're having a, a poker look. It's at the Mike Tyson mansion. They're doing a an, an official their official poker tournament for crypto, and I think they do that with celebrities and with celebrities in the crypto space. And then um, let's see, Coin Agenda. There are there are a few different. Um, Charlie Shrim's going to be there, and this is um, Crypto IQ Litecoin Summit is going to be there the same week. So this looks like it's going to be pretty darn pretty darn interesting. The EOS Alliance, 
So anyway, I just wanted to make you aware of that. In the description of all my videos leading up to this conference, you'll be able to get a $100 discount if you click on my link in there. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that uh, John McAfee is is mixing more drinks. If you're wanting to learn how to mix more drinks, we've, we've featured that this Friday. That's important going into your weekend. Thank you for listening.